Alrighty guys, so for my project here, I'm going to be talking about projection mapping. I'm going to be researching projection mapping and I'm going to be doing some projection mapping. Projection mapping is really just a form of virtual reality, which is an exciting way to interest and engage an audience by deceiving their reality. So projection mapping has a lot of ways, different ways it can be used. I'm going to play a video here that is a great example um, of some of the things you can do using projection mapping. Similar to video mapping and spatial augmented reality, projection mapping is a production technique used to turn objects, often irregularly shaped, into display surfaces for video projection. Some can even be interactive. This can be used in music for concerts and music videos. It's used in sports and in-game shows like what you may see on the floor of an NBA game. It can be used in theater, um, used in shows as an additional element along with the lighting and set to give more depth and change to the set without having to move anything. Um, also events for conventions and galas, fashion shows. I've seen projection mapping onto a mannequin and showing different designs of clothes. Um, it's also used in gaming at different gaming conventions and competitions, as well as in a fully immersive VR room type of feel, which is something I've also looked into a little bit. So throughout the production process, um, projection mapping goes along the same general steps as any production. So in pre-production, we take our 2D graphics and put them onto a 3D model of what we're going to be projecting onto to anticipate how it'll look and make it look natural with the curving and the bending of the projection. When it is actually time to set up your show, um, I call it the load-in setup phase, um, you set up our your projectors in different spots. You don't only need one, you can use multiple um, with different technologies and different softwares to map out what you're going to be doing. Um, so you set up your projectors in a way to cover the object from all angles that your audience will be looking at it and then you're going to align it to whatever surface you're on and then you're going to calibrate it to get everything synced up and on the same spot that it should be. It's also very important that you have marked off where your object is if it's movable and where your projectors are if you're not going to be keeping them there the whole time. Then once the production actually comes around, um, in some applications the image is not even completely pre-created. Sometimes like in gaming there's feedback so the video will change based on what's happening or what your player is doing if you're in gaming. But either way, in production, the general gist is to hit the play button and go through your cues just like sound and lighting does. So over working on this project, I've actually got what's called Heavy M Live, which is one of the best softwares for projection mapping. So I got Heavy M to try it myself and get some first-hand experience with the technology and how to physically do projection mapping, warping, equipment setup, and all that stuff, just so I had a first-hand experience so I can speak a little bit more intelligently and speak from experience. For projection mapping, there are tons of different softwares available um, for just about any budget. And these softwares were not all originally made for projection mapping. They're just like a lot of the tech we've talked about stolen from industry in other applications and twisted and used in our application. So a few of the softwares for projection mapping that are leading the way right now. There's one that's called Resolume Arena, which is very easy to use and you can use as many projectors as you need. Another is Mad Mapper, which is built specifically for projection mapping. Heavy M Live, which is what I'm using, which is a relatively new and made just for projection mapping sh live shows, which is why it's called Heavy M Live. Uh, Mapio 2 is not for live performance, but more for permanent installation. And lastly, I looked at Milum 3, which makes plots and video warping very easy. So you can see all of these different softwares have a little different twist that you might want to use a different software depending on what you're actually working on at the time. Also for my project here, I'm reaching out to somebody who's had more experience with projection mapping in the field and in industry, but I'm really excited about my own research. Um, as you can see here, I set it up with my car. I actually had a projector around, not the nicest projector, but for my applications and for my research it works really well. Um, as long as we get the room nice and dark. As you can see, my car is red. It would be really awesome if my car was white and I could really have a lot more freedom with color. 
Um, same thing with the black wheels, not a lot of freedom of color. There's only so many colors that you'll be able to visually see really easily when projected on black, especially with a not high level projector or multiple projectors. Either way, I'm having a lot of fun. As you can see, I've messed around with effects and stuff. So the first thing you need to do is set up your projector so when it's on the box that it would create with the projection would cover your object completely so I kinda had to angle my projector a little weird to make that work but then you go into heavy M software and there's a field on the screen that um, simulates the field of your projector and as you move your cursor around there will actually be the cursor um, shown more of a crosshairs on your actual image you're projecting onto from the projector so you can align where your mouse is on um, the computer with where your cursor is on the actual item you're projecting onto and then you trace it in a way and create a different map so you have different layers and different shapes of your objects as you can see I have my wheels cut out differently I have the Z emblem, I have my headlights, I have the door handle there and I have the windows and the windshield masked off. So I have a lot more to do as far as making a show goes but I've got the preliminary steps down and now I can mess with what it would be like to have this in a show and go through a few different styles maybe sync it up to music but anyway uh, class thanks so much for watching my midterm video and hopefully we're all alive